And now that we've learned how to create section views for our plumbing plans, let's go ahead and create one more section using all the techniques that we used. We're going to create a section for this water service room. So I'm going to double click into that. I'm going to go up to view section and I want the section head to be on the top. So I'm going to start from up here and I'm going to drag it down to here and then I'm going to flip it. I'm going to extend my section depth to a point about right here. I'm going to hit escape. I'm going to double click into my view. And as you can see, we have this section that was created and it's called a plumbing section. If we click on that and click on edit type, you can see we've already assigned the plumbing section to the plumbing section fine level of detail right here. So that's exactly what we want. We're going to click OK. And you can see now that we've set everything up, everything looks pretty good. So I'm going to adjust my crop region right here, maybe to something that looks like this. And let's hit zoom or ZA to zoom. Now we'll get rid of the sec or crop region by clicking crop region visible. Now let's go ahead and select all the pipes that we want to tag. So I'm going to select these two right here. I'm going to hold control, select these two. I'm going to select this one, this one, this one, all of these, this one, this one, and this one. So now that we have all of our pipes selected, let's go up to annotate, tag all. We're going to select pipe tags. For this, we're going to use the rotate with pipe opaque. Hit OK. And that looks great. Now let's go ahead and change the tags down here to the transparent type. So I'm just selecting all of these and we'll hit the drop down, change it to our transparent type. And that looks much nicer. We can move this tag to the left so it's not intersecting our cold water. The three inch cold water, maybe we want to change that to a leader type tag. So let's select all both of these cold waters and we'll change them to leader types. So we'll go here and we'll select the MEP leader pipe size tag with a loop. We'll use a leader and then we'll drag them over to a point right here. Maybe keep going something like that. And then we'll move this one up by holding shift and pushing our arrow key. That looks great. Now let's tag this piece right here. I'm going to use the keyboard shortcut TG. And I actually want to use this existing tag. So I'm going to hover over it and right click and create similar. And then I got to deselect the leader up here and we'll click the tag right there. Now I'm going to tag this water heater. So as you can see, while I'm in the tag command, I can actually just hover into it and it will tag it. And again, since I'm still in the tagging command, I can hover into this and it will automatically tag that. I'm going to select this tag right here. We're going to hold shift and we're just going to move the tag down. Now I want to tag both the hot water and cold water pipes right here. And so to do that, maybe I want to use my arrow type tags. So we'll start with this type right here. I'm going to right click create similar and I'm going to use a leader this time. And maybe we'll do one here and we'll do the hot water here. And instead of the loops, I might want to use the arrow type. So I'm going to select both of them and change this to my arrow and we'll change it to the free end. We'll click on the hot water and we'll kind of change the hot water tag to maybe something like this. And then we can do the same thing with the cold water. I'm going to move it over a little bit and then I'm just going to drag it until it snaps and then we'll make it look very similar to this tag. So maybe something like that, or we can even move our hot water up and that way we're pointing to the top of this one. And lastly, we might want to move our hot water piping up a little bit. So it's at nine foot eight. We can maybe move it up using our arrow keys to nine foot nine. And I think that looks a little nicer. We would just want to make sure that we haven't affected anything too, too drastically on our isometric view. So let's double check it. We'll go to our domestic water isometric view and let's investigate what happened here. So we moved our hot water line up a little bit. So we just need to make sure that nothing got affected too much. So it does look like the lines are a little close here. So we might want to move the hot water line a little farther this way. So let's double click onto our view and we can just drag it over. But we won't don't want to drag it too much because we don't want to affect the floor plan view too much. So let's double check that as well. And this is the kind of stuff that you need to make sure you do 
when you're working in Revit and using views that are being adjusted per the model. So let's go back to our plumbing documents and let's zoom into this area and make sure that everything looks okay. So you can see that that move that we just made is not really being affected by this view. Let's go to our domestic water plan and we'll zoom into this area. You can see again that moving the piping out was totally fine and now everything's looking great. So again, you just need to make sure that you double check when you do make modifications to the piping, all of the views are using the same elements. And so anytime you move those elements, you have to double check to make sure that everything's looking okay. So that's the one key takeaway for anybody that's trying to create construction documentation in Revit. Let's go back to our section and let's just zoom out and make sure that we have everything. One thing I might want to tag are these different cleanouts and floor drains here. So I'm going to use the TG command. We can tag this as a floor cleanout, and this is my floor drain, and this is another floor drain. I'm going to select both of these by holding control, and we're going to get rid of the leader, and then I'm going to use my arrow keys to tag those fixtures. Another thing I could do is if I wanted to annotate the dimension of this RPZ above the finished floor elevation, I could do that. So I'm going to go to annotate, align dimension. We're going to select the floor, select, select the middle of this pipe, and we'll click. And we might want to add some text to this right here. So we can click our text button. We're wanting to use a leader, so I'm going to click on the leader one. We'll click from this point, and we'll go about right here. And we'll just call this mounting height maybe RPZ mounting height. I'm going to change the alignment of this, maybe something like this. And I think that looks good. Another thing you could do to be really fancy is we could copy this tag and put it right here. So let's do that. So I'm going to remove RPZ and I'm going to hold shift and we're going to copy this tag up. And now you can see this tag is actually reading this piece of equipment. So if we change this piece of equipment to maybe four inches, and then we named our RPZ by clicking on it, going to edit type, and going down to type mark, and creating a type mark of the same name, it's going to yell at us, but that's okay. And now you can see we've just updated this to a four inch RPZ, and we've automatically updated this tag to a four inch RPZ and this tag as well. So that's the beauty of Revit. If you do it correctly, everything will update for you even though you're making changes. So I'm gonna undo that and we'll go back to our three inch RPZ, but I did wanna show you guys how powerful it is to use these tags and these techniques that I'm showing you guys. So the last thing we might wanna do is throw this on the sheet. So we'll go back to our P1 and we're gonna go ahead and move this view up. We'll move this view up as well. And let's put our last view on this sheet. I'm going to move that one up a little bit more. Let's go ahead and pull in our section number one, but let's rename it first. We'll name it Water Service Room. Pull it into the view. Now that we have it in, we can kind of center it to something like this. We'll adjust the leader or the line right here. We'll move this to the center so it's aligned with this one, but we might want to move it over to the left a little bit. That looks good. And as you can see, these pipes got tagged over here. Let's go ahead and delete those tags. We'll double click into our view. And as I hover in, or I use a crossing selection here, it actually selects my pipe. So I have to be careful. I'm gonna use a window selection this time and only select my tags and hit delete. And now they're gone. And we can deactivate this view. I always like to zoom out so I can organize my views. So this one might need to come down a little bit. And now they look evenly spaced, and I think everything's looking good. We have detail number one, detail number two, and detail number three. So essentially, we have created these nice section views that really help demonstrate how everything gets constructed. So there's no confusion. And the one of the cool things I like about documenting things like this is I don't need any special notes. Everything is clearly shown in the model and the contractor can clearly see how everything is built and all the sizes that they need. They can see all the tags and they can see where these sections are located in the plans by going to the overall plan 
and taking a look at these sections right here to just give another view for additional information. Now, the last thing I might wanna do is I might wanna make sure that my sections that I added don't show up on my other plans that I don't want them to. So for instance, when I went to the domestic water 101 plan right here, I noticed that the sections were showing up right here. And so we might want to adjust these. So I'm gonna double click into this view and what we can do is we can adjust the heads here and it won't affect the other section view at all. As you can see, the section is still cutting this area right here. So if we move this head, it's not going to affect anything, but the only problem is we have these tags right here that are kind of running into it. So we'd wanna adjust these. So maybe I would move this over to something like that and move this one over maybe to something like that. And now that looks a little better. But honestly, we could also just completely remove the sections from this view if we don't think they're necessary. So I might do that. So let's do it in the view template. So I'm gonna go into my domestic water view template. We're gonna to go to our annotations and we'll go to sections and we're gonna hit S and we'll just deselect sections from this view template. Hit okay. And now you can see my sections disappear. Let's do the same thing for the P102 sanitary and vet plan. And you can see I have my sections here, but I don't really need them in this plan. So let's go ahead and remove the sections from the sanitary and vet view template right here. So we'll click on annotations, edit. We'll go to sections down here and we'll just deselect sections from this view template. Click okay, click okay. And now you can see all the sections have been removed from these two floor plans and specifically this view template sanitary and vet. So again, when you're working in Revit, you really just need to make sure you're checking everything to make sure that you're not affecting other plans when you add elements. Because remember, we're working in a, a model and every view is viewing that model and so changes that happen one place happen other places. So we just need to be cognizant of that when we are creating our construction documentation. And so once you kind of get the hang of that, it makes things a lot easier. So I hope you guys enjoyed this section of the course. Creating these section views is very powerful. And I think it just is the icing on the cake to making very, very clean and clear plumbing construction documentation. And it's just a really great technique to use for your construction documentation. And it just gives the reviewer or contractor a little bit more information to really see how things are going together since the isometric drawings might not do it justice. So this is just another great tool to have in your toolbox. And since we're using Revit, it really doesn't take that much more time to create these. And so I hope you guys enjoyed this video on creating sections inside of Revit, and I hope to see you guys in the next one. Have a great day. Bye, guys.